Don't worry if you're already familiar with the A2 sighting system. This is not a video just to show you how to zero your rifle. But I do have to go with the beginner stuff first. So we're all on the same page. And then I'll get into the pro tips. And you're going to want to stay tuned because there's probably some stuff you may not know. Depending on how familiar you are with the sighting system. So alright, this is your A2 sighting system. You got an adjustment on the post. You got an adjustment on the drum. And then you got a windage adjustment right there. The very first thing you're going to want to do, because usually a manufacturer will follow mill spec, so you may have to modify this because, yeah, it works great in the military, but we're not in the military. Shooting a target this size, it's pretty freaking hard to miss. But if you're buying this rifle to shoot at, say, 100 yards or varmint hunt or something like that, you may have to modify it if it doesn't do this. The military will typically set these up so this bottoms out when you're at 8.3. Now there's two different set, there's two different types. There's 8.3 and 8.6. Or not 8.6, uh, 8.3 and 6.3. Your 6.3, this is calibrated in half MOA adjustments. Your 8.3 is calibrated in one MOA adjustments. I'm only going to talk about the 8.3 but to convert it over, all you're going to do is double anything I say. So that's it. Alright, so anyway, they will set it up so it will bottom out at 8.3. That's so like, if the insurgents come and it's dark or whatever, and you were shooting at 500 yards, so you're dialed, or 500 meters, you're dialed all the way up to 500 meters, okay, there's a bad guy, I just go until it bottoms out, and then I'm zeroed. For 300 but like I said, for us civilians, that just won't do because you'll be high at all your closer ranges. You need this to count down two more clicks. One minimum, two is ideal. Again, double that for your 3.6. Now, if you have purchased a Bushmaster, you don't need to modify this because they're ahead of the curve. What they did with your A2s is they put an F mark front gas block on here, which is taller. Whatever you gain in the front, you need to also gain in the rear to be able to calibrate this wheel. So let's say you bought a Colt, it will not have an F mark gas block on there, it will have a standard gas block on there, so it will bottom out at 3. Now how are you going to modify this? If it bottoms out at 3, there's a little hole in the top. When you flip your to the small peep, you'll be able to see this hole. And inside there, there's a set screw. This wheel moves separately. The bottom actually does the adjustments. All the top does is mark locations. So you're going to go up one full revolution. Oh, here's the screw. Then you're going to put your tool through that hole into the screw, loosen the screw. And once you loosen it, you got to add two clicks. Then set it back. Don't touch the bottom, but set the back back to where it says 8.3, and then you tighten down that set screw. And then it will be set up like this rifle, and you'll have two extra clicks. Or if, like I said, it's a 6.3, you're going to want four extra clicks. One minimum, or on a 6.3, two minimum. Now understand, like I said, whatever you gain in the rear, you have to add in the front. So if you have like a Colt, you may have to replace this front post and go with the taller post to be able to do that. And you're going to want to do this before you calibrate the wheel. Now, once that's done and we're all on the same page, our rifles are set up the same, you need to zero the rifle. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. Uh, the Marines, what they do is go to 33 meters. Now, and if you have a 300 meter range, this doesn't need to be quite as precise because then you'll go to 300 meters and confirm. But if you live in America, chances are all the ranges that you know of are going to be calibrated in yards. So even if it's 300 yards, that, that just won't do. It's got to be 300 meters. This wheel has to be calibrated as close to exact as possible, otherwise this just isn't going to work. So the Marines, they go to... wrote this down so I don't give you bad information. 33 meters. And then they shoot. Unfortunately, at 33 meters, you're 0.69 low. That's an MOA. 
So basically, you'll be, once you zero at 33 meters, you'll be three quarters of an MOA low. Now, I believe the Army and Bushmaster even recommends, what you do is you go to 25 meters. Now this, again, this has to be exact unless you're able to go to 300 meters and confirm. So if you have to put a post in or a stick in at your target and then tie a piece of string and measure exactly 25 meters and then put a little mark on it, make sure 25 meters is right at the end of your muzzle, do that. And especially make sure you're on a flat surface. If you start adding elevation, like you're shooting uphill or downhill, you got to add trigonometry into your equation, and then it gets even more complicated. So find a flat surface where you can measure out 25 meters, or if you're American, that would be 27.34 yards. Measure it out exactly. It has to be exact, unless you can go to 300 meters and confirm. But we can't. And then what you're going to do is dial up one MOA. What that will do when you zero at that, because at 25 meters, you'll be 0.44 MOA, MOA low. So what we're going to do is dial up one MOA. So now you're only 0.44 low. And 0.44 is closer than 0.69. So this is the way I recommend doing it. Now there are other ways to do this, like you can go to a 36 meters and dial up one MOA and then you're even closer yet, but all your cheater targets, they're all calibrated for 25, and then they say right on the target where you have to adjust your sights. So I just recommend going to 25 meters and zeroing it there. After you've achieved your zero, now the problem comes, okay, so I'm an American, I shoot in an American range, none of these do anything for me. 500 meters, what, that, that doesn't work at a 500 yard range, that's way off. Well first thing, because you have your small peep zeroed for 300 meters, if you want to go to say 200 meters, you don't touch this wheel down here. And when you zero, all you're touching is the front post and your windage. After you're zero, then you can touch this wheel. But anyway, you got your small post or your small peep, zero for 300 meters. Now let's say you want to shoot 200 meters. Boom. Now my rifle is zeroed for 200 meters. I was actually going to measure this or even buy another sight or take the sight off this and show you that yes, it is an elevation change, a measurable elevation change. It does in fact change your zero. It's supposed to be 2.5 MOA. Now that is on 62 grain penetrator ammunition, the green tip. The best and brightest Marines sat down with a big ass box of crayons, some construction paper and some safety scissors and they came up with a very effective sighting system. So you gotta use it how it's set up in order for it to be effective. And one of the things they did is they gave you two different ranges just by the flip of your finger. And the reason I didn't buy this site or show you that I can measure the difference because it's literally stamped right on there, 200 meters. If you're gonna ignore the fact that it's stamped right on there, 200 meters and argue with me, there's absolutely no way I will be able to convince you that this does in fact give you two different ranges. And I went through all the military handbooks trying to figure out why so many people argue with me with that. And it doesn't exactly say in black and white that it's two different sighting systems. It just says if you're within 200 meters, flip to the big peep. But they don't say that big peep is zeroed for 200 meters. And why would they want you to flip to the big peep? A wider field of view? You shoot exponentially worse on the big peep. It's just the way it works. But if you're going to go directly against the manual, the manual also implies meters and yards is the exact same thing. You have to be able to read between the lines to understand the manuals. So, okay. That's great. I have 300 and I have 200 that I'm zeroed at. But again, that doesn't help me within yards. Because, I mean, even at 300 yards, you're still an MOA high with your small peep. That's where this comes in. So let's say you wanna shoot 300 yards, right? You would go to the small peep and you would come down one MOA. 
boom, that's amazing. The next thing is, with your big peep, when you zero this for, when this is zeroed properly and you go to your big peep, in American, 200 meters is actually 52 yards, which a 50 yard zero is what everybody recommends you set up your AR-15s at anyway, because the shift isn't very much. You do run into a problem at, what is it? I wrote this down again. 160 meters or is that yards? At 150 yards is where you run into your problem. And that goes out to, it's, it's 160 meters to 180 meters. This sighting system just is horribly bad at that. You're shooting like five, six inches high. Well, again, you dial down. I printed off this little cheater sheet that I use. So this is your small peep, this is all in yards. And this is the MOA adjustment. This is your big peep, this is all in yards, and this is the MOA adjustment. So let's say I wanted to shoot 150 yards. I would flip to the small peep. Now I'm still gonna be high by 1.8 MOA. Bloop, dial down. Now I'm point of aim, point of impact. Let's say I wanted to shoot, I almost totally forgot to include the most important conversion of all. This is important more than any other conversion you can do on the rifle. That would be at 100 yards. The gold standard of shooting ranges in America, basically if you're an American and you're at a shooting range, there will be a 100 yard range there. So how do I run the conversion for 100 yards? With the small peep, you're almost four MOA high. It's 3.83. So what you're gonna do is flip to the big peep. This will bring you down 2.5 MOA. That's close, but you're still 1.33 too high. And trying to do a hold under, even a small hold under like that, you'd be holding under something like this, and hold a good point of impact, it's tough. You're gonna have a crap spread. You're gonna look like an idiot. It's gonna just be nasty. It's gonna look like you're shooting a five MOA AR. So now we're gonna dial back one more MOA. And that will bring you within 0.33, which that's less than a half of an inch. So basically you'd be point of aim, point of impact, but all your shots will just be a touch high, but you'll still have a nice tight group and it'll be nice and close to the bullseye so you don't look like an idiot. So again, cause this deserves repeating, on a hundred yards, as long as everything's calibrated properly, you're gonna switch to the big peep and you're gonna come down one MOA. One MOA on a three dash eight is one click. One MOA on a three dash six, that'd be two clicks you're gonna be coming down. Point of aim, point of impact, 100 yards. We'll say 600 yards, which would be, I'd have to come up on the big peep, basically 10 MOA. But this is in meters, so what do I do? You're gonna have to run a conversion. You gotta get yourself a piece of scratch paper, write 600 meters on it, and then you have to do a bunch of mathematical equations. How many yards is in 600 meters? That would be 656.17 yards. So I actually have to come up 600, or uh, wait, I did that backwards. How many meters is in 600 yards? It's 548.64 meters. So I have to dial on this if I was gonna shoot 548 meters. So we're gonna go to the five, which is right there, and then count the clicks between six. One, two, three, four, five. So basically, to shoot 550 meters it would be two and a half clicks, but you can't get two and a half clicks. You can only get two, but actually that just works out perfect. So I'd go to 500 meters and come up one, two clicks. Now I'm point of aim, point of impact at 500 yards. I don't remember if I told you this one yet, but let's say I wanted to shoot 300 yards. I would go to the 8-3 like I'm supposed to, but 300 yards on the small peep is down 0.72. So what you have to do is you have to come down one MOA. Just like that. 
and then you'll be shooting 0 0.72 0 0.25 times 3 that would be 0 0.75 and then you'll be shooting about 3 quarters of an inch high this is very important that you get it exact let's pretend i'm a silhouette at 300 yards if i were to have this set at just 300 meters and i tried to shoot that distance I'm gonna be about three inches high. So let's say I wanna make a headshot. I aim right here. Now you go up, what, three inches? So I'm at the very crown of the head. Now you gotta add in the rifle's potential for bad accuracy, which on an AR-15, it averages three MOA. So that's nine inches. So we're looking at a nine inch spread like this. My head's taking up about 25% of that space. So on a 30 round magazine, you'd be hitting on a good day, seven times out of 30. On an average day, you're probably gonna get four, maybe three shots on the head out of an entire magazine without the adjustment. Now let's say you do the adjustment. So we're going from the crown of the head, we're coming down one MOA. That's right in the face. Now I'm taking up, what, two thirds of the target? So now you're gonna get two thirds of your 30 round magazine on the head. And when it's high, only getting like four or five shots out of a 30 round magazine, I would just throw that target away and punch it with a pencil really quick so I don't look so bad when I come back to the firing line. That's terrible. Let's say you wanted to go center mass. Remember, we're just leaving this at 300 meters, but you're actually shooting 300 yards. You're gonna come up three inches. Well, we'll pretend this is your center mass shot. You're aiming here. You're gonna come up three inches. So now you're aiming roughly here. Make that a nine inch circle. You're gonna have a whole bunch of misses. Bring that nine inch circle down three inches. Now you're gonna have some really good accuracy. That's why it's important to always run your conversions. This is an excellent sighting system, especially if you allow yourself two MOA of down. And that's why I got so angry at Small Arms Solutions video. He is a very intelligent person, and when he speaks, people listen. Plus, he's got hookups in the manufacturing side, and he's got a decent sized audience, so he can actually make changes to firearms. When he did his analysis of this firearm, he gave it two major days. Now, this front sight base, for some reason, is, is F-marked, uh, which is sort of unusual, because, you know, when you have a, a fixed carrying handle, uh, you usually don't have an F-marked front sight base, but if they have a shorter front sight post in here, it makes no difference. Now, the barrel, on the other hand, was where the Bushmaster sort of veered off. Uh, Colt, because they were mil-spec, they went with a 1 and 7 inch twist chrome line barrel. Bushmaster felt that the 1 and 9 inch was a much better way to go uh, for the 62 grade projectile. Now, you have to look at this time period, though, too. You're looking around 1989, 90, 91, 92, that area. This was prior to any 77 grade Mark 262. Uh, the heaviest projectile was out there was the 69 grain uh, open tip match with the 1 and 9 stabilized quite well. The first thing was that it has an F mark front sight block and it should have a standard. Like I said, without an F mark front sight block, you would have to modify this yourself and possibly change out your pin. Bushmaster is ahead of the curve. This is actually a better setup than what he wants. So I was pretty angry about that because we're probably going to see this change back to a standard size and then you're going to have to modify this yourself and you're probably going to have to buy a different pin if you want to use this system and be able to shoot within 300 meters or be able to convert to yards really easily. The next thing he gave the Bushmaster a ding on is the barrel twist. This has a 1.9 barrel twist. I'm telling you from experience, I have done this myself. This 1.9 barrel twist will stabilize everything you can fit inside the magazine except for this cartridge, which is a military tracer round. That cartridge is extremely unstable because it's really long and it's really light. So you have to throw a really aggressive twist on there to make it stabilize. I put in this 80 grain Hornady. It's got the dark red tip. I forget. It's like ELD rounds. They would not fit in the magazine. I had to single feed them in. And this rifle stabilized it out to 300 yards. I eventually just clipped the little red tips off of all of them because I got tired of single feeding and shot it through the magazine, but then my accuracy went to crap. 
But the point is, there's no reason to change this rifling away from 1.9. That very guy on Small Arm Solution is always digging Colt for being living in the past, not embracing the future. But yet he wants to bring this back to the past, put on the old gas block. I mean, it's not really an old gas block. This gas block is actually recommended or actually used for flat top receivers because then when you put your carrying handle on top of it, the sight is actually a little bit higher. So you have to go with a slightly taller gas block to compensate for that. And then he wants to go to a 1.7 twist barrel. I'm going to ask you a question. By a show of hands, how many of you on a regular basis shoot this cartridge? The military trace around. Yes, I see you in the back raising your hand that likes to purchase cartridges off a of gun broker that are weird military cartridges and kind of expensive. Aside from you, let me ask you the next question. How many times have you went into any sporting goods store and on the shelf you have seen this cartridge, the military trace around? None of you? That's exactly what I thought. Now, Let's pretend that you're just wanting to run some sort of super heavy match ammo, which you will find in sporting goods stores. How many of you agree shooting a more expensive match round out of your rifle has a higher benefit than just shooting your rifle more? I can shoot this four times more with a cheaper 55 or 62 grain ammo than I could with some 80 grain dollar 25 around match ammo. I see you back in the snickering saying you shoot wolf steel case because you want as most trigger time as possible because that makes you a better shooter, not shooting expensive ammo. Now, how many of you think that shooting match grade ammo on an open sight rifle that does not have match sights, this front sight isn't even adjustable by MOA. It's some weird measurement and it's like 1.3 MOA. So you can only dial in so close. Think it's a good idea. Where this is designed, basically as a self-defense, freedom-restoring rifle, why would you put match ammunition in this? These sights are calibrated for M855, which is 62 grain ammo. This barrel twist, which is a 1.9 barrel twist, is ideal. It is the best barrel twist you can run on 62 grain penetrators. Now, barrel twist does not equal accuracy. What I mean by that is, yes, the 1.9 barrel twist is most likely to have the best accuracy on 62 grain ammo, but it does not mean that'll happen. You still got barrel manufacturing, how well they cut the rifling, how good their tolerances are. Basically, an oddball barrel twist is like having a donut tire on a sports car. Yes, the sports car will be faster, or I shouldn't say will be faster, will be fast and will still perform great. But the donut tire reduces the amount of time you can perform that in, and it would perform better, the car as a whole, with the proper size tire on it. If just spinning the crap out of your cartridges was the way to go, you wouldn't see different barrel twists. Everybody across the board would all be running, regardless of caliber, a 1.7 barrel twist. Because why not just spin it faster? But the closer you can get to one... Uh, I'm kind of going on to a whole nother video here. You can click the little link right here and I explain barrel twist. Which is also why I don't run a mid-length gas system. Yes, with a mid-length gas system, this rifle will last longer. And I will be able to fit a bayonet on a 16-inch barrel. But the Marines, they calibrated these sights for 62 grain ammunition on carbine and rifle length gas systems. So if I pick a carbine or rifle length gas system, I don't have to run any conversions. The numbers on the wheels, the number on the wheel is accurate. If I were to put a mid-length gas system on here, these numbers won't work. I gotta come up with my own numbers and like take a little paint marker and dab them and then go to all the different ranges or print off a card like this and mark it off myself. Or let's say I went with 77 grain ammo. This wheel isn't going to work. It'll be close, but it isn't going to be exact, and I want exact. Let's say I went with 55 grain ammo. This wheel will be close, but it won't be exact. You want a carbine length or a rifle length gas system on this type of rifle. Like You either want an A2, a full length rifle, 
with 62 grain ammo or you want to run this rifle with 62 grain ammo. Nothing else. This needs to run 62 grain ammo for this ranging wheel to work properly. Next thing you're going to want to check, especially if you purchase, let's say this is an A3 and it's a flat top and you purchased a carrying handle. Especially if you purchased a carrying handle off of eBay, you're going to want to check this. You're going to want to verify that their dope that they have on here is actually correct. How you're going to do this is you're going to set up a target 50 yards away. After you set up the target, we're going to pretend this is a target. This is the little target. You gotta use a really tall target and you just put a little dot right here. You're gonna figure it out. So 50 yards, it would be basically the big peep because that would be the small peep zero but we wanna use the big peep. So you gotta come down two MOA. And then you use your small peep. You're gonna shoot a group of three. Now after you shoot your group of three, you're gonna dial up four MOA. So you'd come down on your big peep, two MOA, which would be bottomed out, so you're gonna come up four. So you'd go to the three, and then come up an additional two. Now the reason you're going with that big of a spread because you're using open sights, and the reason you're at 50 yards is because you're using open sights. You wanna be able to track the MOA that this wheel is actually giving you, so you make sure it's correct. So otherwise all this work you've done would be useless if they didn't cut this wheel properly and it's not bringing up your sight the right amount. It should bring it up 0 .006. I think I got enough zeros in there. I'll roll in the number right here just to make sure it's right. So anyway, you dial up four MOA. Then you shoot another group of three. Then you dial up another four MOA. And then you shoot another group of three. Because it's at 50 yards, you're only going to get half value. You should see a two inch difference walking all the way up your paper. If that's the case, your wheel is reliable, it works. The dope that's written on it also works. Also check the dope. Pull out a ballistic calculator, set the rifle for a zero 300 yards, then like type in 500 and see how many clicks it gives you and count them and make sure that's all correct. Now you can also mark this. Let's say you shoot yards quite consistently at longer ranges. So you'd figure out the dope for 500, and then you put a little paint dot on the top. 600, put a little paint dot on the top. Same with four, et cetera, et cetera. This way, like, okay, you're like, I'm at the 500 yard line, I just go a little paint dot. And I strongly recommend going with A2 sights because these are used for estimating range. They're used for shooting at things that are moving. That's what those little ears are for. Well, they're to protect this, but you use them to track moving targets so you hit it. Just everything about this sighting system is perfect. Like I said, a bunch of Marines worked on the design of this for a really long time and there's a lot of thought put in it. But anyway, if you like, check out any of my other videos, click on the links up here. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.